Welcome back to Marching Robots. Today your guests are Jay, the Maestro, myself, Augie Rodriguez. Is that too loud? <laughs> That's just Augie bringing it in at the amplified volume. <laughs> <laughs> We're just lighting it up for you today on the Martian Robot. Happy uh, Donald Trump is now your president by the time you've heard this. <laughs> Happy day of your living. <laughs> Congratulations on being alive. So, Augie Rocks, I have a topic I want to bring up, but you told me you had something like scolding hot. What do you got? Okay. I think we need, really need to raise awareness on this subject because here in America, it's very popular. Everybody's vaping. Ooh, so, my cousin point. just shared a post. This guy, on, this guy posted on Facebook. His vape blew up in his face. He had all the maintenance done by the vape shop. Mm-hmm. Right? So it's not like he was doing anything out of the ordinary. Mm-hmm. The vape blew up in his face. He lost seven teeth and got a second degree burn on his face. Holy shit. Dang yeah. He it's lost intense. Seven teeth? Seven teeth because wow. it literally blew up in his mouth. You know what I mean? All right. Well, let me start. <laughs> First of all, uh, thank you for listening to Marching Robots. We're really stoked that you're here. Thank you for all of our awesome Twitter followers. Uh, uh, to your point, though, what, what I found with vaping is like, it's kind of this. It's kind of this sneaky thing that kind of like snuck in, a like, I don't want to say under the radar, but that's it's going to be the term I'll use is under the radar because it was like, I don't know how to I don't know how to describe it other than like you turned around and like everyone you knew was vaping, and there was like vape stores on every corner like vape stores were like the new liquor store, and then it was like vape stores and tattoo parlors, and then it was like vape stores and blowjobs, and you're just like, what else can you get at a vape store? And then when you looked at it, it was like when you looked at the vaping, they were like these fucking hundred dollar machines. That's what blew my mind. That's how much money people were. Yeah, they're into this so pack. expensive, and yeah. they're like and the this, little little tiny little bottles of oil. Exactly, are like super expensive. So you pay a hundred dollars for this contraption that's about the size of a pack of cigarettes. Right. That's electronic that you charge, and then per little stupid ass canister that they've tricked you into buying, which is like, what would you say? It's called syrup. Yeah, well, but what would you say is like a fair to describe the size of it? Two ounces. Like yeah, about two, two, three, two, two, three ounces. Two Peter Pan ounce. kisses <laughs> yeah. full of yeah. liquid. And that will allow you to basically oh. hookah on the go. But it's not It's not like that at all. I will give you though, there is, I think the, the broader horizon of it is we've become so infatuated with smoke. And it's so popular these days to just be blowing smoke out of your mouth. You know, through music and pop well, culture, or whatever. It's not just that, but they've tricked people into believing that vape was a healthy alternative right, that to smoking or smoking weed. Oh, absolutely! But also, there's this a was bunch just of gateway. Yeah, yeah. There's a bunch of new cancers that have exactly. uh, arose because of vaping. I love this topic. Like you picked a good one because on top of of the points you've already made is that so so from a marketing standpoint, you got. Vaping is like this cool, sexy way of smoking, basically. From a marketing standpoint, I'm not agreeing with. I'm just saying. And from a business standpoint, just to throw in, it's very unregulated. So there's a bunch of people blowing up companies and just doing their thing, and they have no regulations. Thank you for saying that, Augie. Well, they're running rampant until there are going to be regulations, as with any kind of. Yeah, and that's not just the chemicals. That's the bars, the hookah bars, the hookah pipes. Or I'm sorry, I'm not. I'm not hookah. Uh, vape. The, yeah, the vape, bar, vape machines. The vape machines, and so then you've got e-cigarettes too. Falls into that category. The little like the not the, the single the use light at the end. Right? Yeah, where like it's you you unscrew it and you put your own little canister in it, and they do that with like marijuana now and stuff. But I mean, like, so it was cigarettes, and then obviously weed, and then hookah, and then vape. Or no, then I'd, re- I'd say probably say e-cigarettes and then vape. Yeah. And, e-cigarettes and, was definitely the gateway to vape. Yeah, for sure. And like vape, they've got everyone tricked that it's like this healthy alternative. And let me be the first to tell you, watch the truth commercials. Pay attention. Do your research. Right. Vaping is as safe for, for millennials as... Crystal meth. Yeah. Thank you, Logie. Uh, speaking of crystal meth... Yeah. Like, because crystal meth became like the new cool way to do weed. It was like the evolution of it. Listen... Check this out. So, one of my friends was offered a vape by their significant other's roommate, and um, <laughs> it wasn't vape juice in there. It was some type of drug. They don't even know what they smoked. They but put ju- vape juice in. No, no, like no. They drug. put like a hard drug, like, like crystal meth or, or something. something. 
shit. in the vape. Yeah, because it's just two coils that warm up. And they didn't tell them. They just said, "No, they're just like here, try this." Oh, that's fucked up. Wow. Yeah, I mean that's borderline like a rape drug. Yeah, I mean, like, what's to stop somebody from putting like roofies, liquid roofies, into a vape? I mean, like here. Well, yeah. I don't think they make liquid roofies. They make liquid whatever the fuck you want, man. I mean, trust me, from a guy that had a drug addiction himself, I could turn whatever I wanted to into be able to smoke out of the pipe that I wanted to smoke it out of. And I would assume that the same exists for a vape pipe. Oh, if you want to liquid, liquefy it, you're going to do it. Well, that's the thing. It's like, let's say it is crystal meth. You just put it in there, the, whole, the fucking coils heat up, and there you go. You're smoking crystal meth now. Just straight out of a vape. Straight out of a vape. Horrible. That's crazy. It scares that, the shit out of me. I mean, is that some way to, like, just completely fly under the radar with cops and stuff? Absolutely, I mean, get, because if you put wax... You get all these, like, speed freaks and meth heads, like, you know, just yeah. using a vape machine to... But, I mean, you still have to pass the same drug test right. with the vape machine. But it's definitely... It's like the carnival way of selling... Yeah, yeah. A drug to a teenager. Like, right. oh, let me put these bells and whistles on it so you're fucking but idiots. I mean, what's the difference with the e-cigarette and the vape? Aren't they kind of one and the same? An e-cigarette is a... Well... Isn't it still tra- a vapor? Traditionally, a- an e-cigarette was a single use. So, like, when it was... It was not literally single use, but when it was done, it was done. You threw it away. And then you got your next one. Then they, then they evolved into, like, the e-cigarettes where it was rechargeable and you screwed. Right. That's the kind yeah, of... Yeah. Which evolved, light on the end. Which something. evolved into vapes. Yeah. yeah, vape is just the evolution. But those of vape cigarettes. things, like they look like big boxes or something. Yeah. <laughs> exactly, they look so That's ridiculous. Like yeah. if, if I were a smoker and I were into that thing, I would m- much rather have like an e-cigarette that looks at least like a cigarette rather than like kind of well, nursing a baby bottle kind of thing with this box that's mm-hmm. sticking out of my mouth. You know. Well, also and, it's trendy too. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah, because part of it too is that like the hit you get off of a uh, vape. It's huge. Like when you see a person exhale a vape, yeah. they inhale, uh, like they inhale and they exhale a vape. Right. It's like I, I think statistically speaking, it's six to one compared to like exhaling a cigarette or even exhaling a bong hit on like a bong, which is bigger than a well, cigarette. Well, also, I they're, can't. they're not exhaling regular smoke; they're exactly. exhaling vapor, right? So they can actually do like tricks with it too, which is pretty cool to watch. But it's also just a trick. It's, it's a, a trick vapor, to yeah. I'm it's curious to, to see what kind of stuff is going to be down the line as far as harmful things to one's body, like, you know, 5, 10, 20 years down the line when they discover that this vaping is, like, destroying people's, you know, lungs. And- well, I wouldn't be surprised if it went the way, like, Augie Rock said, where crystal meth, speed, coke, right, uh, heroin, which is a huge problem where we all live. Right. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if that became the evolution of vaping, where it's like, Oh, I'll buy a vape at a legal vape store, and I will put these illegal substances into it, and bada bing, bada boom, done. And, I and then there's going to have to be policies made that where cops can actually do drug testing on your vape machine yep. and see what the hell you're inhaling there. But it is crazy. Like I went to the marijuana clinic today, and I bought a vape pen there, and they actually had to. They showed me this part of buying the vape pen is they showed me this new California law which shows that you can't buy a vape pen that doesn't work. So they had to test it in front of me on this like machine where they screwed it in and proved the vape was legitimate and then, and then sold it to me. That's cool. It was, I was like, Oh, okay. I didn't know about this. That's gotta be new because I bought pens in the past, recent past. And that wasn't the case. And they didn't work, right? No, they did work. I just, nobody was testing them. Well, well, the, the law they showed me was that you a uh, store cannot sell a, a electronic uh, – it didn't say cigarette. It used a different word. And it electronic smoking it. device? Yeah. That uh, was not proved as functioning. Yeah. So they had to like test it out. And when she told me she had to test it, I was like, are you just going to like hit my – <laughs> my, my pipe is that how you're gonna test it you just chill here in the back and burr, okay this one works here you go yeah, right. but no she plugged it up this like it kind of looked like a, a breathing machine <laughs> no it looked like a um an a a not acdc yeah an acdc battery yeah she looked like that with the two coils on it and she screwed it in nine volt yeah, yeah big old one yeah. screwed it into one of the coils and then she screwed it into the other and she's like all right it works 
Uh, okay, I believe you. <laughs> yeah. well, that's pretty neat. Since you say so, I'll accept your, <laughs> your professional opinion. Right. So, um, so for our listeners, by the time you hear this, uh, Donald Trump will have been uh, inaugurated. Inaugurated. Thank you. I should. Into the presidency of the United States. Uh, some of you may feel pro that. Some of you may feel con. We're not agreeing or disagreeing with you. You're entitled to feel however you feel about it. But um, one of the things that we talked about recently, I just want to kind of get your opinion on, is as this new person comes into the office, how does it make you feel as an American knowing that you still live in this place where somebody like this can be elected and you still have the freedom to disagree publicly or agree publicly? I'm just kind of curious. Like, despite, let's not go down the Hillary Trump route. Let's just talk about right. As an American, how do you feel about this guy that shouldn't have won, won? And how do you feel about that? And how do you feel about your right to protest that? Well, I mean, personally, I'm really pissed off that this, this that this has actually happened, uh-huh. that we're still seeing this through all the way to the inauguration. Like, I thought at some point along the Somebody's line between be, November 8th in. and, like, <laughs> January 20th, like, something would be done to say, wait a second, let's, like, stop this mm-hmm. insanity and I, I was just thinking about this actually earlier today that this really has become similar uh, in comparison, analogous to the Roman Empire, you know, where you oh, know, the, whole, the whole concept of bread and circuses. And I, I thought about it earlier today that this society has become so profoundly distracted that we allowed this to happen, that we voted in this clown. Yep. And... Basically, we are a society now of bread and circuses that we are this distracted society and we're so involved with TMZ or whatever the hell's going on on the Internet and, and Donald Donald Trump's Twitter, you know, rants and stuff that that's ha- crazy that he yeah, I mean, so legally tweet. I don't know. It just it bugs me. Well, it bugs me and it amuses me in the same uh, token that this is a man who is so easily provoked. Yeah. I mean, talk about like just a small minded. Yeah. He can't everything. He, he can't not say something. Right. He can't control himself. Me, uh, and I mean, it's just ridiculous. I'm curious to hear your opinion because I know you don't really follow politics. But how do you feel about this? Where your life's going here, where your future's going as a member uh, of this I country? I think uh, I forget which comedian said. I think it was Joe Rogan. It was like <laughs> the government. Someone in the government was just like, let's get a dumb guy. See what they do, right. and then that you know we See all know who better. who that yeah. was. <laughs> yeah, and then it was let's get a dumber guy. You know what I mean? And yeah. now it's just getting stupider. Yeah, right. I mean, it's obvious to to like it, you can't look at this country and say we have control. Our voices matter. You know what I mean? Because obviously they fucking don't. True. True. You know, and then they have the vote of the electorals. They tell us bluntly, you don't fucking matter. We don't. We're gonna just do what we want to do. We're gonna put who we want to put. You know, no matter your voice. And on that note, I'm well going to say, put, no, I'm going to say, well I'm, I'm going to bounce off Augie's uh, idea there that, you know, I think a lot of people are going to be really reluctant to vote next time. I mean, especially if the Electoral College is still in place. Do you think I mean, I, I'm, I've voted ever since I was 18 years old. Yeah. And I feel so powerless now with my single vote. That's going like, to be my question. Do you, you know, do you think they'll be reluctant to vote or do you think they'll be afraid to vote? No, I think re- that's why I chose the word reluctant. Yeah. I'm not afraid to vote. Okay. And I probably, you know, 99% still will vote. Uh-huh. Um, but I'll be honest with you. I mean, I, you know, I was a lifelong Democrat. This was the first year I did not vote the Democratic ticket. I voted for, uh, for Bernie. Bernie. For Bernie. But that's because I feel both parties have become so corrupted and, the whole party system. Well, I think in the primaries when, you know, we were all lied to and, and that was a fix and everything else. I mean, I, you know, it was, we were very disappointed. But um, I you, think with what's going on hope? with what Augie was saying, though, is that I just think so many people are so pissed off and so disillusioned now with the Electoral College system. And confused. And feel that, like, wait a second, our, the popular voted in Hillary by three million votes – and this clown is still going into office. And, like, just why so you, should we even bother to vote? Just you know? so you know, Donald won the popular vote. No, he didn't. He, he did. 
No. I'll, I'll bet you. Yeah, money. he did. He did, he did win the popular vote. Jurassically. Yeah, Jurassic. I've seen it. Yeah, it's it's true. Because my boss was all pissed off because she's yeah. from Florida, and the fact that he uh, he won Florida, she was like disgusted. Yeah, he yeah. lost the national popular vote by three million votes. I'll, I'll bet you money that he won. What, whatever you want to bet. Yeah. I'll, I'll, so, I'll put ten. So on expand, it. I'll take you up on that. I'll put ten bucks on it. Sure. Shake my gross. Burned hand. <laughs> so to expand what I was saying, you know, and then you look at Bernie Sanders, they literally pulled him out of the election because he was getting a great positive response. They cheated him out of the election. Exactly. That's what Bernie that's, Sanders been listen, put forward, listen, he would have been. Listen, that's what I'm saying. Is he, he was, was as actually, much a rebel, though, as Trump. I'm sorry. Right, let me I'm finish. sorry, Aki. Go ahead. So he was making the ways, you know, through the crowds and the, getting the popular vote and telling people he wanted to change. But they didn't control him. So they literally pulled him into the Oval Office and had to talk to him yep. and pull him out of the fucking election yep. because they didn't control that guy. And it's all – it's all. They, look. They, they put forward the person that they felt was the best. And you know what? The, 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 gamble the population saw through her and they, they, they bet on the wrong horse. No, but it's you got to gotta really see the bigger picture. The bigger picture is, is the magician's hand. They got you looking at the left, but really they're doing something on the right. Right. Donald Trump proves, smoking if nothing else, exactly. that's all it is. Regardless of how you feel about the guy about being your president, Donald Trump proved this. He proved that the system is broken, which is what he set out to do. He also proved that the DNC doesn't, the left hand of the DNC doesn't know what the right hand's mm-hmm. doing. And he also proved that the left hand of the Republican National Committee doesn't know what the right hand's doing. And that's what he set out to prove. And what I truly believe is that Donald Trump never actually thought he'd be president. I, I really that. believe that. I believe, that I believe well. he set out to prove a point, and now he's like, oh, And fuck. now he's proven it even more by right. putting in all of his corporate right. cronies into his cabinet. And, had, and here's the funny thing is that had he not won and had he just got close, people would have been like, oh, Donald Trump showed prove this and prove that. And he would have went down as like uh, a brain farting on the word. <laughs> when you when you when you prove that your government is wrong, whistleblower, a patriot, is patriot the right word? Well, it depends on what, you, what your definition of patriot is. <laughs> he, he would have went down as a patriot as somebody that proved this broken system exists. A revolutionary, yeah, a revolutionary. But instead, he won, and now he's the fucking. Ugh, he can't be. Wow. And honestly, do I think he's going to be a great president? Not by any stretch of the imagination. Do I think though? That the next president will be better as a result of Donald Trump? Absolutely. Probably. Absolutely. Well, I will say, he's the, though. He's the best thing that could have happened to the future of this country, but he's the worst thing that could have happened to the present of it. Right. That's but how sometimes I, shit needs to get worse before it can get better. Exactly. But I will say the news this morning was that even though he, you know, has talked about repealing Obamacare, you know, the Affordable Care Act, uh, his new plan, although he hasn't mention any details about it basically smacks of a revised Obamacare that it's like exactly what the what the that's liberals what and the Democrats have wanted. That's what he's always said is that he's not against social health care. He's just against Obamacare as right. it stands. And the bottom line is I I'll be the first to say that I personally don't need Obamacare. But if I did, I would be grateful for it. If it was the only way that my daughter and wife could afford to have health care I'd sign up for it and I'd be grateful well, for it. Well, there's millions of people out there with pre-existing conditions that are, you know, right. this is a matter of life and death for them. Exactly. If they don't have yeah. some sort of affordable care and But he's kind of taking insurance. this imperfect idea and perfecting it. Or so he says. Or so well, he says. I mean, we shall see. Yeah, I, shall let's see. remain positive about May- that. Maybe he'll prove everybody wrong. And From your mouth to... Stranger things have happened. All, all I'm saying stranger is it's so fucking happened. crazy, it just might work. Exactly. Exactly. That's yeah. that, that's the thing, because you have... And like he, his cabinet that he's picked, it's just like you said, Augie. His yeah. cabinet is so crazy, it just that, might that's, work. That's the only but reason that, like, I Ben think Carson kind of crazy? I mean, that's, it's just that's so fucking crazy. Scary. Yeah. But so, the, 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 this is the reason I think it might work, because now you have businessmen in a place of power for the country. Yep. Now politicians who have done nothing but... You know, spoon fed because of who their parents were. Plus, you have to give Trump credit that he has already he's already donated his salary as the president, and then he's also said that his entire international business sales for Trump Enterprises will be donated to the U.S. Treasury. Right, but the taxpayers will also be 
paying for his security staff at Trump Tower. So let's, I mean, there's a flip side to everything. He, the dude's going to be making money while he's in office. Let's not excuse him I, from that. I agree with what you're saying. I'm just saying that let's at least allow him to fail. That's all I'm saying. Is he going to fail or is he not? I'm not here to there say. There are so many Americans that are hoping that he <laughs> I know, but let's at least allow him to do it. Yeah. Because here's the thing. This this is where I'm going to draw the line and say, I'll, I'll be the first to tell you I did not vote for Trump, but I would I would have, if I had a gun to my head, I would have voted for him over Hillary, but I didn't choose either. I chose Bernie. That being said, is that if I had to draw a, line, a hard line in the sand, I am more interested in the failure or success of Donald Trump than I would have been in the failure of Hillary Clinton. Why, why do you say failure or success of Trump, but only failure of Hillary? Because you're already convinced that she would have failed. Yeah, because Hillary going into the election was a proven criminal, was supporting pedophilia, was supporting that's, fraud. That's not true. I, I believe it's true. I'm fully. Well, behind. you believe a Republican conservative smear campaign? No, I, I'm not I saying she's it. a saint. Like, don't get me wrong yeah. here. The woman I mean, I, she's involved. definitely a, a professional politician. Yeah, but the woman was involved in the murder of American citizens in Benghazi. A, B, her husband travels to international islands that inv- that involve pedophilia and murder, and she has not disputed it yet. And C, the woman was involved in fraud on a on a federal level. There's no disputing it. Whereas Trump said some comments about a girl's vagina. I say comments about girls' vaginas all the time. And despite all the PC things about Trump, all the politically correct ways that they say, all of your husbands, all of your boyfriends, all of your dads, all of your sons have said something derogative about a woman's private parts amongst their bros. And I'm sorry to say that. I don't mean to offend women when I say that, but that's the bottom line. Everybody with a penis has said something offensive about a person with a vagina at some point or another to their bros does it make them a bad president no i'm just gonna that's just my opinion i'm just gonna 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 disagree with your opinion i want you to know do i think he's gonna fail yes i do do i think he's gonna fail epically no i do not do i think the next president will be a better set yes I'm, i'm disappointed in you jay that that you basically like made excuses for this guy for this I don't make excuses. Misogynistic, racist, homophobic. I no, mean, no, 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 no. You're Hold basically on. saying like it's cool for like the most grandiose locker room talk asshole to be president. That no. oh, every guy is like it's made that, jokes, derogatory remarks about you know, women. And, I'm and not their... saying it's okay to make those grandiose comments. I'm saying that all three of us have made those comments. Speak for yourself, though. No, I know for sure you have. I've been around you when you said it. No, I haven't. Yes, you have. And I've been around you when you said it. And would I vote for either one? <laughs> That's of you not as true, president? Jay. Yes, I would. I'd vote for both of you as president. And I'd vote for myself. <laughs> I would pick Augie Ag- as a yeah. vice president. And we all have said these things. Have you? I, I've been around you when you said, I'd, yeah, I'd fuck that girl. I've never said that to you, Jay. You're a liar. You have Dude. totally said that to me. You have, you have made comments about the physical appearance of a girl and your sexual attraction. I've said someone is good looking, but I've never said, I, as someone's walking by, I've never said to you, I would fuck that girl. Dude, That's bullshit. You can look me in the eyes and say, you've never, I'm looking at you right now. Well, I don't speak like you've that. You've never made a comment. I have, about whether you would or would not have sex with a girl based on her physical appearance. I've never said to you. No, that's not my question. No, no, no. I've never said I would fuck that girl. But have you ever made a comment about whether you would or would not have sex with a girl based on her appearance? To anybody. I, look, we're, we're, we're debating. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are this, silly fuckers. This is ridiculous because every person has a physical attraction to someone. And every every person might say in their mind, like, wow, I, I'd really like to be with that person. Right. But it depends on how you say it. I mean, if you're constantly talking like you're in a locker room or actually acting out on those thoughts like Donald Trump has, but that's all, unacceptable. All I'm saying, not pro-Donald Trump, just pro-people in general. All I'm saying is that all were men... And all women. And all women, too. Uh, yeah. All, all women, women have had that Of thought. a certain age, make sexually suggestive comments about the opposite sex. We all do it. All of us. It's just part of being an adult. Whether it's appropriate or not, I'm not saying that it is. I'm just saying it happens. We all do it. And well, I think there's, you know, a difference between saying, like, wow, she's really beautiful or she's really, or even saying, like, oh, she's hot 
yeah. versus like, oh, I hit that or I bang. Like that's all just immature juvenile bullshit. That's locker room bullshit. Yeah, it's, but, it's insecurity. You but know? do you know anybody that has never said like, I would smash that or I'd hit that or I'd fuck that or I'd definitely hook up Most of my that. friends don't talk like that. Oh, I doubt that. I doubt that's so serious. <laughs> no, Why I is that it. hard to believe? I totally my friends don't go, don't say to me, dude, I fucking smash that. That's ridiculous. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> like, <laughs> what do you think? I, I could, yeah, of course. You know, he's a grown fucking man. I, I could totally see his friends. We're not both like grown men. I know, but I don't talk like that all the time. You talk like that all the time. You do, Jay. Right. Yeah. Exactly. I agree with that. I'll Augie. be the first to admit, I talk like that. I believe that. But I've also heard you talk like of that. Of course you have. And I've you've known me probably only when he's around you. you whole, you've heard. <laughs> you've known him my whole entire life. Exactly. Of course you have. So all my only point to this is, I'm not saying that what he said was okay. I'm not saying that by any stretch of the no, imagination. No, no, no. Let me, let me, let me hold, hold on. Let me but wait, wait. You're, you're, you're picking on all you. But like, you're I'm saying, not picking no, on no, 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 no. But you're saying like, oh, every per. Oh, fine. Every person may have said it a few times in their life. Right. But every most people. My point is, most people grow out of that. I'm just they saying, grow up. My point, you know what is I'm saying. So Donald Trump has been entitled no, and has this like he got caught on mic saying something. As like, hold on, while hold on. he was in his 50s or 60s. Hold on, let me finish my point. He got caught on mic when he didn't know that he was mic'd in a private right. quarter, being the a, asshole that on, he is, with another dude right. commenting about an attractive girl. He got caught off with without even signing a waiver. They used his voice. Without his even, but again, it's not getting caught saying, "Hey, that woman's really hot." It's getting caught saying something completely inappropriate and derogatory on a daily basis. I look at a girl doesn't excuse it, and no, it totally excuses it. I don't even need an excuse. If a girl is sexually attracted to me, I would think in my head, "I am sexually attracted to that girl." That would be a mature thing to say. No, but saying, "Oh, I'd like to fucking hit that," or "I'd like to grab her pussy," that's ridiculously immature and juvenile. I disagree. If I see an attractive girl and I say, I'd hit that. I'm sorry, man, but most men that I know grow out of that shit. Grow out of wanting to have sex with girls? No. Grow out of not speaking derogatory to- about that. Why is that. that derogatory to say that you would have sex with a girl? That's not Why derogatory. Why do you keep pointing at me? That's not derogatory. Sorry, just, <laughs> to think, that, to think in your head or to even say to your friend, man, you know, she's beautiful, man. Or, you know, to even think like I'd want to have sex with her or yeah. I want to go ask her out or something. That's fine. Right. But you, we're talking about two different things. We're talking about what Donald Trump just, says. Okay. To say out loud to your friend. That I would, I would definitely. I have smash, never said had sex I'd with smash. That's the most ridiculous to, term. To whatever I'd term, like smash that. That's whatever fucking word ridiculous. you want to use for it to say that <laughs> I would, have, I would tag. approach right. that girl based on her physical appearance. I have never in, in, in my ten year friendship with you, Jay. I've never said to you as a as a woman has walked by, I mean, I'd really like to hit that. But I have heard you say that girl was hot, or that so girl has what? Ass, or That's that completely has innocuous ass. to say someone's hot. Or to How's say someone's beautiful. How's that any different? That is... Are you fucking kidding me? No. If you're going to say somebody is hot, you're commenting on their sexual appearance. So what? If you're saying someone's hot or someone's beautiful, that's fine. Why? But I've Why never is that s- any different than saying, I'd fuck that girl? I just... I don't know. I think there's a, a complete difference in maturity level in that. I disagree. There's also the vibration that that sets out. What do you mean? Do you think girls aren't saying the same thing about you? Oh, I know they are. Exactly. Because I do work. Exactly. Girls are saying the same. This conversation has been very one-sided with men. But girls are saying the same thing when they see but here's a, here's nice the thing. bodies and nice butts and nice crotches and nice chest and nice arms. They're saying the same thing to their friends. Like, it's, it's, it doesn't it's not excuse even, it, though. If, if, if women are talking the same way that Donald that's, Trump talked, that's, that's just of, as inappropriate. You don't need an excuse for speaking sexual attraction. This, you don't you don't even need to have it. It's reason. not sexual attraction when you're talking about assaulting a woman. I'm but, sorry, I, I'm just not buying by, it. By saying like I'd fuck that girl, that's not that's not what he said. Her. He took what, that what, and went what even did further. He said, he said, what did I would grab that girl by her vagina. No, he said when you're a celebrity like me, you can do anything you want. You can grab him by the pussy and all this other shit. That's not appropriate. Real quick though, I want to tell you guys about my favorite meme of the election. There was a fucking. Passenger bus, like the, you know. Like a two-story London bus? Yeah. Okay. No, no, no. Not like the, like a Greyhound. Okay. Painted blue. And on the side it said, 
Trump grabbing America by the pussy. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yeah. He, he, there's never been a person that's become more of a character of himself. And I think it was before he was even running for president. Trump was just a character of himself. He's like Arnold, Stallone, and Mel Gibson multiplied by 10. And the Joker. Yeah. He's just like, it's just like when you just say the word, regardless of the presidency, when you, before this, when you were talking about like celebrity apprentice or whatever it was, and you just said the word Trump, people were just like, uh, roll my eyes. But doesn't it just sicken you that this country has gotten to such a low level that most people respond like, what do you like? Oh, I just like that he speaks his mind. I wouldn't say that it sickens me. I would say that as a Democrat myself, I would say I'm disappointed that they weren't able to pull the best person out of the primaries to run against Trump. On both sides. No, I'm saying, like, as a Democrat, right. the Democratic Party was not able to pull the best person out of the primaries to run against Well, the Democratic Trump. Party in the DNC has had a notorious yeah. history of failures. It's I mean, horrible. It's, it's they un- just, they just rode the Obama train all the way into Nowheresville, and they were like, oh, how did we not win? Oh, because your country hates your current president. Well, either way, the country, whether they had Bernie as their candidate, you know, as they should have, or Donald Trump, whatever... Either way, that would have been the best contest because that both of those Trump versus both of those Bernie candidates, right, were anti status quo. They would have shaken up the established Bernie was political the DNC structure equivalent of Trump. Well, I don't think he was quite as uh, hated, in a row. right? But I mean, yeah, I mean, he was definitely radical and different, and and had some pretty radical ideas. But even now, when they were voting on the affordable health care, he was. Vehemently against shutting it down. Well, I don't know. I think Bernie would have. I I don't know. It's it's. There's always an argument. I mean, I'm always. sure. I mean, and then like the, I, it, the, for me, it would have been more like it, even he rolled over. Even if Bernie wasn't as strong a, a candidate as as Hillary, I think. Do you really believe that though? Or I do you think he. Was I a personally candidate? don't, but I but there's so many people that that argue the fact that he was such a weak candidate, he never would have won. I truly believe it would have been an, a, a really close and interesting contest. I think Bernie, I Bernie, 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 Bernie and Donald Trump. Trump. Because they appealed to that same kind of revolutionary, like, but let's shake he, this shit up. But do you know what the unique thing about Bernie was? It's that Bernie had not only the black, the Hispanic, and the millennial community. Yep. And the homosexuals. Bernie had all four of them. And women. And women. And Hillary had a little bit of each. She had like a sprinkle of each on her right. banana split. Right. But she wasn't able to fully bring the banana split to the table. Hillary just got too comfortable in that established status quo. And honestly, like regardless and of how it, you feel it about fucked it, her in the end. I people mean. don't want another dynasty in the in the White House. Well, hold they on. don't want another Clinton. They don't want another Bush. They right. don't sorry, go ahead. To, to add on to exactly what you just said, because I've been I've been waiting to say this. I really have this theory of the election was given to Hillary, so they got Trump to run against her, right? Because who's the fuck is Trump? He's a business guy. He's a fucking, he's a circus clown. You know what I mean? So they said, all right, we're going to put this guy up against you. You know what I mean? This is your friend. You asked him to do it. He said, yes. He's just going to say all this ridiculous shit, and Hold he's on. never going to make it. Augie, let me just put a pin in what you're saying right now. I want to hear the end of your point, but I want to also elaborate on what you just said for our listeners that don't know this. Augie Rocks just said, that Hillary Clinton was a friend of Donald Trump. And for those of you that don't know, Donald Trump contributed millions of dollars to not only Hillary's presidential campaign, but also the Clinton Foundation. Right. So Hillary or uh, and Donald Trump was at the the wedding of Hillary and Bill Clinton. So this guy is a friend of that family. So please, regardless of how you feel about Trump or Bernie or Hillary or any of these things, understand the fact that. This was orchestrated. Trump knew Hillary. They were friends. What happened, happened. Augie, go ahead. That's what I'm saying is I really think it was, okay, they're saying, Hillary, you're going to win. Let's get someone up against you. It's it, never going to win. But it was it's never going to win. Exactly. house of cards. It was a house of exactly. cards. Exactly. And they, they just they bet on the wrong person. And it turns out that everybody, like we were saying, because he didn't speak like any other politician, yeah. and he was just, he went out there and played his fucking kazoo. One of the things, well, the more ridiculous he sounded, the exactly. more people fucking loved him. Exactly. But they never it's, thought it was going right. to work that it's way. It's like one but of That's the, why it was that's, a house of cards. It well, just yeah, completely blew up. said about 
Donald Trump is that the guy was an expert about making people see his opinion. He was just like a fucking ace about that. It was like whatever he said. Yeah, but you know what? Glue was concrete. What's back. infuriated so many is that he used hatred and fear and all the classic, you know, propaganda tactics that, you know, that's why he's always compared to Hitler and, and everything else is because fear is the quickest way to engage the masses, you know, and when you're when you're stoking these rural, uneducated, you know, white middle Americans in the Bible Belt and, and they're gathered and, and they're hating their lot in life at that point. I mean, you and you're stoking that that fear uh, pot. You and know? then you're and telling like, you're going to give them more gun control. Well, I mean, party. You know. yeah, that's a great point that you raised up is that I felt like, again, whatever you guys decide as your presidency, we don't support or disagree with it. You got, we all we do is encourage for you to go out and educate yourself on your choices. Please don't just be like, oh, CNN said this or Fox News said that. Go out of your way to find out the differences of your candidates and what you voted for. Whatever you decide, Infamous Chronicles will not judge you on. We, the Martian robot. Well, it's oh, like, it's, sorry, Martian robot. It's like, not judge it's, you it's on. like what they well, were Hold saying. on, let me finish my point. So I was just going to say, on, I felt like with, with Trump, where you brought up the, the gun control, it was like, it was like he, he looked at Twitter every morning, and whatever the trending topic was at the top, he was like, fuck that. He's like, oh, trending today? Uh, gun control. Fuck gun control. Oh, trending today? <laughs> women's rights. Right. Fuck women's rights. Oh, trending today? Maestro? Fuck the maestro. But see, <laughs> that elaborates my point <laughs> even you, fucking Donald more. Trump. Exactly. <laughs> well, I, my theory, that elaborates even more. You know what I mean? No, I mean, you're totally right. I'm agreeing with yeah. you. I'm just saying, like, I felt like basically like his campaign was like, run for whatever's popular on Twitter right now. Did you, uh, after the Golden Globes and the Meryl Streep, thing you know there was a i mean hold on let's talk about this well hold, hold let me finish on the meryl streep thing but after that happened there was a couple of the uh republican young uh celebrity female republicans I'm, i won't mention names but one of them was the daughter of <laughs> george w bush who came out and said that oh well this is just the hollywood bubble and everything and in response to that there was this epic i mean epic uh twitter rant from this military guy who actually grew up in dirt ass poor rural middle Texas, grew up completely in a conservative household, everything else. And you've got to read this guy's Twitter around because he just takes these Republican entitled elite to task and said, you know, if you think this is a Hollywood bubble, get your head out of your ass because all these people that Donald Trump was speaking to in middle America, those are the people that live in the bubble. Those are the people that have not gotten out of their 10 mile radius of their small little hick town and have understood what it's like to live amongst other cultures or other races or other, you know, skin right. colors or whatever and understand, you know, multiculturalism and diversity and, totally. and, and, and get it, you yeah. know? And so they live in this completely, shrouded bubble First that the bubble, bubble that the, the, these conservatives were yep. were talking about the Hollywood bubble and this this military guy from from middle Texas I think he lives in like New Jersey now or something he got out of that you know dirt poor uh, rural Texas uh, uh, upbringing and he just took them to task I mean it was one of the greatest Twitter rants I've ever read that's yeah. awesome good all right well that's actually gonna do it for us this week Again, on the marching robot. Do your do your research. Whether you agree with us or not is irrelevant. Please understand that CNN, Fox News, NBC, whatever it is, wherever you get your news, cannot be your only source of news. Understand, there's two sides to every coin. All we do is encourage you to go out of your way and find your information. And, and on top of that, remember, please, our sponsor, Audible, they give us. They give you free audiobooks. So all you have to do is go to audibletrials.com slash TIC. This works for all five of our shows, including Martian Landscape, Discussing Depression, The Infamous Chronicles, Her Chronicles, and Marching Robots. All you have to do is go to this. You get a free 30-day trial of of audible.com and any free audiobook you want. Compliments of Augie Rocks. He just says, hey, you get an audio. Read. Like that. Read some shit. On top of that, we have a new sponsor that we're going to be announcing next week. And the other thing I want to bring into point is that our parent company, Infamous Works, we have five shows now in our group. 
it's not necessarily that they're connected, but it's a family of podcasts. We support each other, and we want you to listen to them all. So first things first, we have Martian Landscape, which which airs Friday nights on Dash Radio, or you can find it on SoundCloud and Podomatic. Not SoundCloud, just Podomatic. Podomatic. Podomatic and iTunes. Perfect. Thank you. We have the Infamous Chronicles on Tuesdays, uh, which you can find wherever you listen to podcasts. Then we have Discussing Depression on Wednesday nights, which is a show about mental illness with Casey Moran. And then Thursday nights, we have Her Chronicles, which is a female version of the Infamous Chronicles, which can be found on iTunes and Google Play. And then Friday nights, you have our show, uh, Marching Robots. So we have lots of different ways to hear lots of different opinions, and we're really excited to share them all with you. All right, we'll see you guys next week.